So where did we get up to on the extension? Uh, we'd built the roof and we were having nail gun problems, but there still wasn't a roof fitted. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show. I just wanted to wrap up the whole roof debacle after various storms and snow and ice and nail gun problems and uh, you name it, many other things. As I say, it's only the start of where things end up going on this extension project. So let's pick this up at the point that we've just finished building the roof and we're almost ready for the roofer to come along and do their bit. Lots and lots to do. I've got about three hours before the roofers turn up and with any luck, next time you'll see this, it'll have a roof. And 48 hours-ish later and here we are. We are done. We have a roof. Oh my God, it was a bit of a comedy of errors like, but uh, yeah, we got there in the end. To cut a long story short, uh, I think on the last video, I said the roofers are turning up in a few hours and I've got like a few hours work to, to do. Well, very, very shortly after that, the roofers turned up. They turned up early and I wasn't ready for them in any which way, shape or form. Oh God, I felt really bad, but uh, yeah, it worked out fine in the end, but it just meant the roofers were chasing me around while I was basically finishing off because I still had to cut all of the trimmer rafters. So basically, We've got the trimmer at the bottom of the window and at the top of the window on each window, but I hadn't cut the trimmer rafter at the top and at the bottom because I didn't know how long it needed to be because I didn't know where the window was physically going because that was a thing for the roofers to decide so that they could work it out based on the tiles and uh, getting it to the nearest hole tile and all that sort of thing. So I kind of agreed that that would be done last but I would at least have the ends cut and ready so that all we had to do was a 90 cut on that end, a 90 cut on that end, put the trimmers in and then that would be it. But I didn't even get the bird's mouth or anything done. So I was literally, <laughs> they were chasing us around the roof. I was cutting this one and fitting it. And literally as I was fitting it, they were rolling the felt over the bit that I'd fitted and then they'd get up to here and then would, they'd be waiting for me to cut that one and put it in. Oh man, but it does mean that I've got this slightly awkward cut <laughs> left because I didn't have time to do. Oh, you can't actually see it. Let's try from this side. So yeah, I haven't done the soffit underside cut. So yeah, obviously I need the underside soffit cut to match that and I'm just going to have to, it's not going to be an easy cut to do, but I'm just going to have to try and manhandle those three cuts. It's fine. It's not a major problem. I can get in with a multi-tool or something, but it's just one of those cuts that I would have liked to have got done in advance, but I literally, I just completely ran out of time. But yeah, the roof's in. The Velux windows are in. Let me show you it. So once again, it's nearly dark again already. We've got dry verges on both sides. I've just temporarily slung some guttering in. As I say, do not judge because that is not the permanent guttering, but I can't put the permanent guttering in until we've sorted out proper fascia covers and um, either that or I'm gonna paint it. But either way, I can't paint it because the wood is far too wet. So just gonna leave that fascia wood which is basically another rafter it's a, a six by two on the front there is it no sorry an eight by two can't remember what it is it's quite big i trimmed it down it was a little it's about a seven by two on the front but it just means in the meantime if it rains we do actually have some way of collecting the water and eventually that'll run off it's going to run in that direction for now and it'll just run off uh, with some elephant trunking off into the garden just to get the water away from this section of the property. But eventually that will run to a downpipe, kind of here-ish, and that'll go down into the drain that is kind of, uh, where is it? Over there, around the corner. So there'll be a drain run coming down this side here and a gully kind of over here-ish 
and that's where all of the, you can't see because of scaffolding, but a completely meaningless thing to show you. All the flashing in, all the flashing kits for the uh, Velux windows, all the flashing at the top there, the flashing will run under the windowsill up there, and obviously that end section of walls all going to get rendered and whatnot. As I say, the dry verge is all in and solid and doing its job up that side, so it's going to look awesome. Now, as per usual, things didn't go entirely smoothly, and while I don't like to slag off the work of a trained professional, especially if they're doing jobs I can't or don't want to do, I did want to highlight a few issues we've run into, and you can look out for them on your own project. One of the reasons we're making these videos is to show you what a real world building project is like, and hopefully it's also an eye opener as to what builders have to put up with on a daily basis. Most builders I know subcontract the roofing work, so it's one of many things they have to manage behind the scenes. I've tried getting my roofers back for some other jobs, but seven times they've said they were coming and didn't turn up, so I've given up with them. So on the whole, the back roof is fine. They did all the complicated stuff that I didn't understand, such as aligning the Velux windows with full tiles and making sure there was a full tile at the top and the bottom. However, there's a couple of things that I'm not 100% about. Obviously, I'm not a roofer, so let me know what you think in the comments. First of all, they didn't fit verge starters, so both the left and right hand ends of the dry verge were left completely open. This is a problem since birds would nest up there in the blink of an eye. I've since fitted some verge starters, but these are designed to be fitted first. They clip into the first piece but that's impossible as far as I can tell if the dry verge has already been fitted so I ended up having to screw them in place which is fine but it's just a bit frustrating on the subject of dry verges you'll see the left hand verge is nice and flush to the barge board but the right hand verge has a massive gap up the side I've no idea why they left it like that but it's no use since once again nature will move in before you can blink I think it's since I haven't cut the roofing battens short enough and that's not an easy fix so the only option might be to fit a trim in the gap to take up the space I'll need to take a closer look to see what's going on here they've also left a huge gap at the top of the verge where once again nature will very quickly move in and there's a cracked tile so it's not a complete disaster but it's just a bit disappointing that we've paid a decent wedge for this and I've been left with a bunch of jobs I need to finish myself from what our bricky said it's par for the course these days since a lot of these problems would often get fixed in snagging for now that is a major milestone really this is a part of the project now where okay i mean admittedly we don't have windows but we can start getting the property dried out a little bit not only that but i've cleaned all the scaffolding down because the scaffolding can go now we are done with scaffolding i can sort what's left on the guttering and all that with a ladder i don't really need scaffolding set up to do the remaining jobs and to be honest it'd be nice to get it out the road and then i can do all the final bits of drainage and whatnot because i can't do the final bits of drainage while the scaffolding's in the road but there will be a drain run coming all the way down here gully somewhere in the corner there, downpipe coming down to that, kitchen waste, everything else will run into that as well. And yeah, bish bash bosh, jobs are good. So as I say, top priority now is drying out this space because this room did get very, very wet. It will dry out. There's still insulation out in various places. So I've got the insulation out above the kind of windowsill area and various sections where I can poke the, the insulation in afterwards but at least getting the insulation out it'll let the cavity dry out a little bit and once it's properly dry then all these last bits of insulation at the top and whatnot I can put that in any time really and then I can get the cavity closers on and get it all nice and toasty so in order to try and help this area dry out a bit i mean yeah okay we've got a gaping hole on the front here where the bifolds are going so it's never going to get particularly warm but I think I've mentioned in previous videos that our wood burning stove gets very, very warm. So all we're doing is when we've got the wood burning stove on, we just leave the windows open in the bay. Obviously all of this is coming out, but we'll leave the windows open in here and then the heat from the living room can come out into here and just help to dry the place out a little bit. If I'm working out here, I've got the fan heater, but this is now, it should turn into a relatively dry space, hopefully. And then once it's dried out a good bit more, I can get this all whacked down, get the blinding sand put down, get the visqueen down, and then we can get the 
subfloor, the oversight concrete for the subfloor, and then the suspended floor in over that. By the way, all of these bags here, these have got actually insulation in from like old insulation from the spray foam that was up in the loft on the hip end that came out. And we've ended up using this as just a bit of a fall protector. So obviously these windows are very high up, especially at the minute when we haven't got the proper floor in. So when you're working perched up on a ladder, doing things like putting the plasterboard up and sorting pipe work and various other things that need to be done, it just means that we've got a bit of a kind of pseudo fall protector. I might as well just keep these here for now. They're not harming anyone and it means that you can just chuck them under the ladder and if anything happens, you've got a bit of a soft landing. At the point that I order the whacker plate to smash all this down, which I will in probably the next week or so, once it's, as I say, once it's dried out a little bit, but I'm probably also going to hire a big space heater and just leave that running for a day or so in here and that'll help as well. It just means otherwise all of the moisture in this floor is going to get trapped under this floor forever. Once the damp proof membrane's down and the concrete's down and whatnot, that damp has got nowhere to go other than up the walls and that's a problem that we've been fighting with for the last year. So really I want this as dry as possible. I want to let the moisture evaporate out of this as much as possible before we cover it up with a damp proof membrane. This poor extension has been through a lot in the last few weeks with Storm Arwen and everything else and lots of rain. The more we can do to give it a fighting chance at this stage, the better. And the last thing that we want to be doing is sealing the moisture in under the floor. By the way, just to explain the roof structure in a bit more detail, we decided to allow for a nice big overhang at the front since this offers a bit more weather protection near the bifold doors. So this is about as big as you can make a roof using 4.8 meter timbers. And by the way, the roof pitch is 16 degrees, which is something you need to watch out for because if you go below 15 degrees, you'll be severely limited on what tiles and roof windows you can use. Even at 16 degrees, you might have to allow for a bigger overlap between tiles. This is something I didn't know about when I ordered the tiles, so I ended up having to pick a few more up. Luckily, they're stock items, so it was easy enough for me to go and get them while the roof has ploughed on, but it's just something to look out for. The rafters are 200mm deep, and it was spec to use 150mm noggins to allow 50mm airflow over the top. The exception to this, obviously, is at the trimmers around the Velux windows, which are deliberately set back to allow a slight splay on the plasterboard while avoiding any cold bridging. This will make a lot more sense when we talk about insulation. Quite a few people were asking about rafter spacing and how we decided where the Velux windows were going and all that sort of thing, so here's a very quick explainer. The first thing to check obviously is the architect's drawings. These drawings are a little bit out of date from what we ended up going with, but hopefully you'll get the general idea. As you can see, he's specified Velux MK08 windows, which are the big 1400 by 780 jobs. But other than that, he hasn't specified exactly where they're going, and it's quite common to work this out a little bit later down the line. So so the next thing that we check is a slightly more detailed structural engineer drawings and as you can see he's put minimum 200 by 50 C16 rafters at 600 centres twinned up either side of the roof lights but again there's no absolute specification of exactly where the windows need to go or what the rafter spacing is going to actually work out at in real life. The key thing is as long as we're not going above 600mm centres then everything will be fine and plus we're using C24 timbers which is technically beyond spec anyway. So we then put a slightly more real world design together based on what had been suggested by the architect and the structural engineer. The architect had said minimum 15 degrees but we already knew that we were shooting for 16 degrees here anyway which again is beyond spec. You'll see on this plan I'm only showing the single wall plate at the front but we worked out that we could get away with the double wall plate so effectively 100mm of wall plate at the front and still stay above the 15 degree mark on the roof pitch. And what that allowed us to do was to have a slightly bigger overhang at the front, which generally gives a bit better weather protection around the bifolds. By the way, I haven't shown the noggins on this, but what you can see is the trimmers. And obviously we couldn't set the trimmers, which is this bit at the top and bottom of the window, plus the rafter tail and the rafter heading up to the ledger board at the top. We couldn't set any of that until the roofers had decided exactly 
where the Velux windows were going to line up with the gauge of the roof tiles. In terms of the rafter spacing, obviously the structural engineer specified the 600 centres, so basically as long as we were within the tolerance of that or, or below it, then we we're going to be fine. There was no way of doing a 600 gap between each rafter and to have the Velux windows exactly where we wanted them, so what we ended up doing was uh, 600 centres at the start and then uh, from this rafter to the twinned pair it's 410 and then for the rafters around the Velux window you are limited by the size of the Velux itself. The windows we've got are 780 wide and the recommended a 20 to 30 mil gap to the left and right so we allowed 25 mil basically so that essentially meant that we needed an 830 gap between the twinned up rafters and then following on for that we managed to go for a 600 after that but then we couldn't do a 600 to the central one it just didn't work out like that it ended up at 520 and then we're back to the same 830 gap that we talked about earlier and then everything else is symmetrical. So we've essentially got a central window and then equal spacing of the rafters to the left and right with nothing going above 600 centers. So there we go, folks, a milestone in this project. And by the way, how long did it take the roofers to do this roof? I reckon they would have had it completely done in one day if I'd been ready for them because I wasn't ready and we had a bit of a delayed start. They did come back the following day to finish stuff off but I reckon we would have had the whole lot done in one day if I'd got everything properly prepared. But um, yeah, I just ran out of time. Weather and unfortunately circumstances beyond my control really got in the road. But that's what happens on building projects, folks. Thankfully, the roofers were very patient with me and waited for me to do the last bits and pieces. But uh, yeah, it could have been a lot worse. If they'd had another job to go to, I could have lost the roofers until next year. And by the way, if you go to selfbuildextension.co.uk, I think I've mentioned it before, but I have been putting a bit of a website together, a bit of a kind of diary of what's been going on, and uh, just a bit of a kind of more detailed explanation of this whole self-build extension project. So if you want more information, if you are considering doing your own self-build extension, then head over to selfbuildextension.co.uk and you can find loads more stuff over there. For now, we've still got a huge amount to do. I think one of the next jobs is to get the floors for the bedroom built in the house and get that into some sort of weatherproof state ready for winter. So watch this space. Take care, folks. I shall see you next time. Tatty bye. <laughs>